Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for this evening proceedings. Good evening. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the International College of the Cayman Islands 47th commencement, which officially launches our year of jubilee celebrating 50 years and counting of providing excellence and higher education in the Cayman Islands. Please remain standing, if you will, for the national anthem, the national song, and the invocation in that order. With Melissa and Miss Lisa, we'll walk up to the stage. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send her victorious, happy, and glorious. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O thou only wise God, our Savior, in whom are found the treasures of wisdom and knowledge of science and faith and technology, we pray thee to illuminate all colleges, schools, universities, and other institutions of learning with the light that comes from above, that those who teach may be taught by thee, and those who learn may be led by thy spirit. In particular, we give thanks for the achievements of the Inter International College of the Cayman Islands over the past 50 years. Thanksgiving to thee for those who now celebrate their graduation into another phase of life for the Cummings family who initiated this project, for professors, lecturers, tutors, students, and caring parents, we give thanks. Grant, O oh Lord, that by the increase of knowledge, thy truth may be confirmed, thy glory manifested, and the young people of this world may be led into a useful vocation of life but more and more teachers and students may find unveiled in their lives the wondrous things of thy law and be drawn to adore thee with mind and heart and soul. Be pleased, O Lord, to bless the careers of those graduating and the efforts of the ICCI contributing to peace in our souls and in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Miss Melissa Smith, Miss Lisa Mercado Chris, and Reverend Godfrey McGoo. To the ICCI Board Chair Wayne McManus and members of the ICCI Board of Trustees, both past and present. To our distinguished and beloved President Emerita, Dr. Elsa M. Cummings. To our distinguished platform guests, including His Excellency, the Governor of the Cayman Islands, the Honorable Martin Keith Roper. Deputy Chief Officer of the Ministry of Education, Sports, Agriculture, and Lands, Ms. Lynette Monteith. To the orator for the 47th commencement, and ICCI Board of Trustee member, Mr. Orman Williams. To our Dean and our Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Eliza Beverly. To our colleagues and educational partners, including Dr. Stacy McAfee, UCCI President, thank you for being here today. To all of our sponsors, including our primary and excellent sponsor, RBC Royal Bank Cayman Limited, to the family and friends of our degree candidates and to this very distinguished group before us today. 
the graduates who have completed their degrees in 2019. It is now my pleasure to bring to the podium our chair of the ICCI Board of Trustees. Would you please join me in welcoming board chair, Mr. Wayne McManus. Thank you, Dr. Kuhn, and welcome, everyone. I wanted to start by recognizing uh, my fellow board members uh, who are here today, um, starting with uh, Yolanda McCoy, who is a deputy board chair, um, Dr. Elsa Cummings, of course, who is our president emeritus and 50-year uh, board member, uh, to our immediate past chair, um, Mike Ministo, uh, to April Cummings, welcome April, somewhere in the back. Uh, Matthew Adam, uh, Orman Williams, uh, our immediate past deputy chair. Uh, Mr. George McCarthy is with us today, who is a, a, a emeritus trustee. Heather Bodden, a former longstanding trustee as well. Um, Colleen Dugan Williams, thank you for coming. Andy Adapa, um, and also, I wanted to acknowledge Lucille Seymour, who is uh, at home recuperating from a successful hip surgery and wishes she could be here. And I don't think she's missed a graduation in, in decades, but uh, she wanted to be remembered. I wanted to um, thank the, uh, the administration, Dr. Kuhn, and his hardworking team. We're a very small uh, staff, but uh, everyone has many hats. It's sort of a Mayberry RFD operation, um, but I don't know who Otis would be. I don't think we have an Otis. For those of you who remember Mayberry. Um, could you please stand, the staff members, anyone? Who is Dr. Dr. Beverly, uh, Lisa, Melissa, Autry, thank you so much for everything that you do. It's, uh, it's not an institution that runs itself by any means. They are the hardest working people I know in the Cayman Islands. That's the truth. I also wanted to uh, acknowledge and have stand our outstanding faculty members, many of whom are here today. Um, could you please stand, faculty? Now, I'll in include myself in that rank, although I haven't taught for several years and I don't think I should while I'm chair. Now, who would they complain to? Um, and also, um, um, uh, wanted to thank uh, all those who've served the college in, in its past 50 years. This year we'll be celebrating our golden jubilee. Uh, we are the pioneers of higher education in the Cayman Islands. Uh, 1970 was the official opening date, but ICCI started as a dream uh, with Dr. Uh, Hugh, Hugh Cummings, the late Dr. Hugh Cummings and his wonderful wife, Dr. Elsa Cummings, who uh, dedicated their lives to ICCI. And it, Really appreciate it. As, as I'm told, it started in 1966 and it involved Heather Bodden, among other volunteers, chopping bush and getting maiden plum in the, in the, in the process. Um, and of course, to the, the family, to, to the uh, husbands and wives, first of all, of any of our graduates, uh, do we have any spouses in the audience? Could you please stand? Uh, they might be at the pub kidding. Uh, and, and also to the parents, are, are there parents present? Could stand? It takes a village, certainly. It must be a proud moment for you. And with outstanding brothers and sisters and family members and friends and co-workers, uh, bosses and subordinates, many of our students are now in mid-management, so they have some of their favorite employees here to cheer them on. It, uh, but mostly to our graduates, it is a milestone in your lives. It may be your first degree, it may be your second or even third. Some of the graduates with master's degrees have been with ICCI for a time. Uh, the associate's graduates will continue with their studies. Uh, I can say uh, with certainty, and having been in education most of my adult life, that ICCI is certainly not a, a, a diploma mill. It's not an easy degree. Uh, our standards are quite high. And thanks to uh, our online learning system, Populi, it is impossible even for faculty members uh, not to work hard uh, because we have the document for assessment purposes, everything that we do. 
So congratulations on all of your hard work. I hope that you carry with you this honor, this pride uh, of being an uh, ICCI alum and that you will continue to be in touch with the college and uh, be active on our alumni board. If you're not wanting to be a board member, we, we could use some new board members, uh, but please be active and don't forget where we're at. Uh, I hope that what you've learned in um, your formal education has helped you not only in the field of study that you chose, but also in your sense of self and your development of your human characteristics that will make you successful in life. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you, Wayne. It is my honor to invite the governor of the Cayman Islands, His Excellency, the Honorable Martin Keith Roper, to the podium to bring greetings. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is indeed a pleasure for me to be here um, today. I hope you're all enjoying the uh, sort of inclement and unusually cool weather. It reminds me of a Sunday morning back in my hometown of Halifax, so I'm sure you all enjoyed that. Um, as, as I've said before, being governor is a, a real honor and a privilege for me, and it, it is genuinely a pleasure to come to events like this to share in the, 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 the celebration and the success of these uh, graduates in 2019. And I'm trying to use social media to be accessible to all and show my support for the, for the community. So if you don't believe the governor knows how to use Instagram, have a look at Gov Cayman Islands and you, and you may see some photos of this event a bit later today. So it is indeed a real priv privilege to be here at this 47th International College of the Cayman Islands graduation ceremony. And Dr. Cummings was telling me she thinks she's been to every single one of them, apart from one, she thinks, which is a, an incredible, incredible achievement. And this is a historic milestone this year, celebrating the Jubilee year and 50 years serving the Cayman Islands with excellence in tertiary education. ICCI has successfully established itself as a higher education institution in our islands. It is an intellectual leader and it is recognized for making a major contribution to shape a Caymanian society. Throughout the last 50 years, ICCI has built an extensive community network of over 2,000 alumni, quality academics, supporting partnerships and community friends with many in attendance here today. ICCI's mission is to prepare students for career placement and personal enhancement, as well as to equip its graduates with practical skills of critical thinking, problem solving and self-directed learning for success in the 21st century job market. And ICCI has demonstrated its belief in the power of education, combined with a spirit of freedom, creativity, and innovation as key to success in life. So I would like to pay my own tribute to the members of the ICCI Board of Trustees, ICCI's excellent president, Dr. Byron Kuhn, the administrative staff, faculty, business partners. But most of all, I want to offer my heartfelt congratulations to the graduating class of 2019. This is a, a big day for all of you as you embark on a, on a new chapter in your lives, and I wish you every success. The thank you again for inviting me to share this day with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Roper. I now invite Ms. Lynette Monteith, Deputy Chief Officer of the Ministry of Education, Sports, Agriculture, and lands to bring congratulatory remarks on behalf of the Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly, who could not be with us this afternoon. Protocol already observed. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all, congratulations, graduates. The minister, although unable to be here this afternoon, does send her best wishes and heartiest congratulations to all of you. Now this is truly a momentous occasion. 
Graduates, it is a day you have anticipated since the first time you entered the hallowed walls of the International College of the Cayman Islands. For many of you, today represents that start of the next phase in your educational journey. Another step towards preparing for your chosen career pathway. This next step will see the majority of you returning to ICCI or moving on to another institution of higher learning, whether here at home or overseas. For others, today symbolizes the genesis of a new journey, shifting from countless hours of research and many nights spent burning the midnight oil, sure you will agree, to a future filled with endless possibilities and the freedom to pursue other interests. A milestone that can be both exciting and anxiety-filled as you deliberate about the future and experience fear of the unknown. Focus on the positive, because while we all know that having a college degree is not the single contributing factor to higher earnings and greater opportunities, nor is it a guarantee of the same, it significantly increases the odds. For you ICCI students, now is the time to advance to the next chapter of your life, as you have proven that you can rise to the occasion, whether continuing as a student or as an employee. Regardless of your mission, rest assured that you are now better equipped to make a positive contribution to society and to your community. As I look at each of you this afternoon, I'm pleased to that we in the Cayman Islands government were able to facilitate so many of you during your tenure here at ICCI through the provision of academic scholarships. I'm also delighted to glimpse several civil servants and employees of Cayman Islands statutory authorities seated among the graduating class this afternoon, clearly embracing this aspect of our goal in attaining a world-class civil service. The Cayman Islands government, through the Ministry of Education, is fully committed to the training and development of aspiring young people who would one day be at the helm of this country. So, as you go out into the world, hold firmly to the knowledge and skills that you have gained from this institution, and use these to contribute to the continued growth and development of our beloved islands and beyond. Embrace the challenges that will come. Remain focused and diligent. And remember to place God at the helm of everything you do. In closing, permit me also to express my congratulations to the board and staff for their dedicated service. You have been and continue to be a trend setter for higher education in these islands. Thank you. Just really to close, congratulations again, graduates, and may God bless you always, and may ICCI continue to go from strength to strength. Thank you, Miss Lanith Monteith. It is now time for the scripture reading. As Miss Pauline Brown makes her way to the podium, I would like to tell you a little bit about her. You didn't think I was going to do this, did you? According to Ms. Pauline, her educational journey was difficult. She was told that she would not amount to much because she could not learn. Yet she persevered. As a mother of two, including an autistic son, she worked her way through the ranks to supervisor at Scotia Bank. Sometime during her 40 years there, she saw a flyer advertising college programs at ICCI, and this led her to begin her first studies in the college's GED program. She completed her associate's degree in 1996 and enrolled in the bachelor's degree program in 2013. Now retired, this bachelor's degree is more of a personal milestone instead of a professional pursuit but she advises young Kamanians to take advantage 
of all educational opportunities that will help them compete for competitive positions in the job market. She always wanted to go to Europe, and now as a graduation gift to herself, she has her plane tickets in hand. It looks like to me she learned just fine. Please welcome Pauline Brown to read the scripture. Good evening. Would you please stand? I will be reading from 1 Corinthians 13, taken from the New International Version. If I speak in tongues of men or of angel, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fail. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I become a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Miss Brown. Howard, you may be seated. Our next speaker is one of the top students graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration with a concentration in Accounting. He is a prison officer at Her Majesty's Cayman Prison Service. Despite a busy schedule that includes a family, work, and attending college full-time, he has managed to receive excellent grades. He is well-liked by his college peers and sets the bar for other students to follow with a warm hand of appreciation. Help me please welcome Mr. Steve Miller. Wow. <laughs> Protocols having been established. Good evening, everyone. I am certainly honored and humbled to address you on behalf of the graduating class of 2019. And I must confess to you that I have been trying to put on some muscles by going to the gym, but having to prepare myself for this grand event and awaiting its arrival made me lose some muscles instead. <laughs> I suppose that worked in my favor as I'm able to fit comfortably in my suit. Now. Today I stand before you filled with a great sense of happiness and accomplishment. My peers and I have put much effort 
into the last years of our lives, into being able to stand here this very moment and say that we've earned the right to be here. Getting here certainly was not easy. And there are many times when I thought I would not reach this finish line, but it is indeed those struggles that have made this moment the sweeter. It feels amazing to be here. In fact, it feels as though getting here took me forever. Imagine graduating from Cape Man Academy in 2012, completed my associates at UCCI in 2016. I started my bachelor's here at ICCI in 2016. Now it's 2020 and I'm graduating after getting married, having a daughter. I would say it's about time. Yeah. One of the toughest part of my schooling experience is right here at ICCI. College can make you or break you. Can you imagine having worked in the morning and finishing at 5 p.m. and instead of going home to your family, you make, the, you make your best effort to beat the traffic, to make, it at, to make it in time for school, for your class that begins at 5.30 p.m. And you don't finish your second class until 10 p.m. in the night. And this process is repeated for four days of the week, for four quarters of the year, for about three to four years. And if that wasn't enough, we have weekly discussions, homework, <laughs> projects, and in our final quarter, a capstone. I must commend the dedication of the ICCI teachers. They've always believed in us, and they knew that belief wasn't enough. So they acted on that belief as they too sacrificed being at home with their family in the evenings to be here at school with us after a long day of work for four days of the week, for four quarters of the year, and year after year. And they did it all to make us who we are today, to make us great, to make us leaders of today, and to show that we've been to ICCI. Amidst the sleepless nights that ICCI cost us, we've had a wonderful experience here. We've explored the sister islands and various parts of the world by going on seminars. And it is these experiences that create such a strong bond amongst teachers and students alike. Like the time Mommy Melissa, sitting right over there, had to defend us when the ticket lady at Atlantis in the Bahamas refused to give us back our money after the after they um, closed the slide during inclement weather. And we were waiting in line for over half an hour. Or when Miss Melissa scolded me for calling Shamari a chicken when he was too afraid to cross the wire bridge in Uruatan. <laughs> Nelson Mandela, in one of his famous quotes said, difficulties break some men, but make others. And we are here today because we are numbered amongst those who decided that their, difficulties, their difficult circumstances will not break them. Instead, we've learned to see problems as opportunities that haven't presented themselves. As we look back this evening on our journey, a journey that started out with fearful, hesitant, tentative steps, we see just how far we've come. And it certainly has been an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be part of the class of 2019. It has indeed been a journey, one which has begun with imbued, one which has been imbued with wonderful memories. Memories of serving the community by picking up bottles from the beaches, or giving back to our school by renewing the paint on the walls. Ladies and gentlemen, it is these memories that testify to the exceptional caliber of the graduating class of 2019. And I want to pay tribute to each and everyone. I would also like to pay tribute to the wonderful teachers, custodians, the board of trustees, parents, spouses, and friends. You have all played a role in guiding, molding, and shaping the men and women here tonight. On behalf of the class of 2019, I thank you. Fellow graduates, as we face and tackle the inevitable new visions and new purpose in our quest for greatness, I pray we hold true to ourselves. Remember to hold on to our belief in God, 
or value system or work ethic, and most importantly, treat others the way we expect them to treat us. It is these qualities that will direct us further on our journey. Today's achievements may certainly fade or even be forgotten one day. The ovation may become a distant memory and our certificates and medals may gather dust in a drawer or on a shelf. But we will always be remembered for caring enough, for helping someone, for making someone feel special and appreciated, and for being the kind of person that others enjoy spending time with. Our life is a remarkable occasion. I have no doubt that we will rise to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. And I invite master students, Ms. Sandiso Malanga and Ms. Catherine Wells to the podium to introduce our orator for this evening. been established, a very good evening to all, and thank you all for joining us on this milestone occasion. We have worked extremely hard to be sitting in these chairs today. And what better way to add value to our achievements than having some words of wisdom? Our keynote speaker tonight not only possesses and exudes the qualities that embody the ICCI philosophy and mission, he has been committed to the empowerment of our community through service in both his personal and professional lives. He holds an MBA with merit from the University of Liverpool and is a fellow of the London Institute of Banking and Finance and is also a fellow of the Chartered Management Institute UK. His banking career spans over 37 years, including service at the senior management level. He was president and director of Cayman National Bank for 15 years. Presently, he is the managing director and principal consultant of OA Williams Consulting. His expertise extends to employee engagement, effective teams, and cultural alignment. Our orator is an accredited lay preacher in the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas and lay pastor in the United Church. He has served and continues to serve on a number of local boards, including Chairman of the Board of Governors of Cayman Prep and High School, and serves on the Board of Trustees of the International College of the Cayman Islands. Please join us in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Ormond Williams. Protocol having been established, I take this opportunity to express thanks to the administration, the leadership of the International College of the Cayman Islands, and to thank the Board of Trustees for the opportunity to address you this evening. I also take this opportunity to greet all of you gathered here for this, the 47th graduation ceremony of the International College of the Cayman Islands and to celebrate with ICCI what is undoubtedly an auspicious occasion in its history, its golden jubilee. I congratulate all the graduates who will be receiving their degrees this evening and will be addressing you in a few minutes. However, it is only fitting to focus on ICCI in this early part of my address. 50 years, by any measure, is a very long time. Now, I know I run the risk of offending some people who might think that I'm referring to them as old, but I encourage you to still greet me warmly after the event. For those of us who have hit that threshold of 50, 
and celebrate the blessing of doing so, I know that I'm in good standing with you. 50 is a big number. And the urge would be to focus on this milestone rather than trace one's fingers over the contours of the journey. As important as the destination is, what really matters is your tenacity to endure the milestones on the journey and to enjoy the ride, for it determines whether and how you arrive at your destinations. For ICCI, this has been a long journey. The founders and those who served after them must have had second thoughts along the way. They must have questioned their decision to embark on what could only be considered a daring adventure. As they encountered challenge after challenge, they must have contemplated resting for a while, cutting their losses, and abandoning the once noble dream of effectively delivering higher level education to the Cayman Islands at a time when many wished, but few took action. For 50 years, those who have led the organization would have heard no so often that they must have concluded that the destiny of ICCI was doomed. 50 years is enough time to review the books, to conclude that the numbers just don't make sense, and to come close to financial embarrassment. It is enough time to question whether the sacrifices required to make ends meet now would be justified at some point in the future. 50 years is enough time to have your credibility and rightful place questioned, to experience highs and lows, to be so scared of the future that you could not pause to celebrate the success that you have achieved. You see, if you have lived long enough, or if you've had the good fortune of operating for 50 years, it would be surprising if along the journey, this has not been part of the litany of your experience. Yet, I hasten to offer you the other side of this story before you begin to question how I'm able to create a one-sided coin. Amidst the fight for survival, the struggle for recognition, the pleas for funding and support, the doubts and fears, a light still burned. It was not the size of a bonfire, and quite often it was just a candle flickering in the distance. The history of ICCI would state that this light was the purpose that the leaders of ICCI guarded closely and resolutely advocated, as if their very lives depended on it. This purpose gave ICCI hope and drove us to be fixated on excellence which cannot be left to chance. The vision and the mission of ICCI over these 50 years became a passion that ran in every artery of our being and that of the institution while fueling every decision and action. And out of this unabashed determination, success was achieved again and again. Accreditations were procured. Lecturers practically gifted their time. Students took the long trek to Newlands. Degrees were conferred. And most importantly, students were sent back into their world better equipped and prepared to make significantly greater contributions to their families, workplaces, and the Cayman Islands society. Such is the legacy of ICCI to date, and the journey continues. It is a 50-year-old story that we must all be justly proud of. We stand amazed, if not encouraged and astonished, that out of something so small, greatness has been delivered time and time again. How could it be possible? A vision, a belief that a need existed, that enough had been said and the time had come for action. 
How could it be possible that having been hammered by life circumstances, that ICCI is still here, still shining, still standing? A resolve, a fire that reminds us that in serving something greater than ourselves, in working cohesively, we stand the better chance of success and accomplishing more. It is a spirit to complete and not to leave work a calling unfinished. 50 years is enough to want to sit in one's laurels with a posture of arrival and then to plateau, but not ICCI. If anything, its work has just started as it leverages 50 years of lessons from its milestones of struggles and victories. We are wiser because of 50 years, more resilient and ever more determined to make a difference. You should know that one of ICCI's strategy is to produce persons that businesses and uh, industry need for their growth. We are not concerned only about providing our, children, our students with knowledge. We want, as they go through and leave our programs, that they enter the workforce prepared to effectively tackle the tasks for which they are responsible. We are committed to ensuring that our students who are already in the workplace are the first choice for employers to promote or give additional responsibilities. This is not because of the degree they possess only. It is also because of the skills they are endowed with, the ability to think critically and creatively. Because of these things, they are uniquely capable of taking their organizations and various contexts to the next level. Our students are better positioned because they come to us with a hunger to be more. They come to achieve their full potential and to make a difference. They and us understand that each of us has a responsibility to be our best selves and to contribute in meaningful ways to the advancement of our country and those we come into contact with each day. We are proudly about the business of doing our part to create and sustain a strong and uh, prosperous Cayman Islands. We stand ready to add our voice to the shaping of education for these beloved islands. It is for this reason we rise up every time because staying down, standing on the sidelines, or sitting it out is not an option. Our role in these Cayman Islands is too critical to allow us to allow for the weariness of the journey, the needs that we have, and the challenges that we confront to cause us to abdicate our responsibilities. To the wheel, our shoulders are connected as we center our focus and our energies on the purpose to which we have aligned ourselves. So here's to ICCI, and another 50 years of serving the cause of education in the Cayman Islands. As we consider the impact we've had on our islands over the years, one measurement in analyzing how our graduates have changed the landscape of these islands is to assess their involvement in this country and beyond. Even if we were to limit our analysis to the Cayman Islands, we know that hundreds of our graduates hold or have held senior roles in public and private sectors. Hundreds are industry experts and command the highest levels of leadership and respect in all sectors of our society. We take the liberty to attribute, at least in part, their success to the foundation they receive from the education offerings at ICCI. It is for this reason that I raise a clarion call for our alumni to join us in making your alma mater a stronger and more sustainable organization. We believe that we had a hand in your advancement. We see ICCI on your LinkedIn pages and we read of it in your bios. We urge you to give back to your organization on a constant 
and consistent basis. Our country and businesses have been blessed with great resources. Using a biblical injunction that to whom much is given, much is expected, I implore 50 organizations, public and private sector, to commit this week to supporting ICCI for the next 10 years. Become the angel investors to secure and advance the next 50 years of this worthy organization and its noble cause of moving the Cayman Islands forward and far on the education spectrum. Become the new founders, the catalysts for change, the mentors, the lecturers committed to providing support and imparting knowledge. We can do more if you do more. We have delivered over 50 years and will continue to do so. To businesses, we say, we can help you achieve your objectives if you help us achieve ours. And incidentally, they are the same. Success in the 21st century job market. This brings me to our graduates in today's ceremony. You have arrived at this juncture at a critical time in your lives, in the life of our country and the world. The pace of change is unprecedented and uncertainty abounds in new ways. The world did not slow down to allow you time to get on board. We applaud your decision to board this train and your commitment not to be left behind. And whilst the world did not slow down for you, it is certainly excited that you're here now. You have a critical role to play to transform your space. I urge you to reject the temptation to have a sense of entitlement with these new qualifications. Instead, I challenge you to have a renewed sense of purpose that the role you have to perform going forward is to make your world better than you found it. This approach is validated in a quote from, Nel from Martin Luther King Jr. as he received his Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo, Norway in 1964. And this is what he says. I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. That must be your bold aim, and with courage, you dare to execute it. Harness the data that you have garnered, convert it to achieve its full utility, and apply it in your circumstances. For only through data conversion and intentional application can the desired transformation be achieved. Your goal is to identify problems preventing people from living their best lives and to apply solutions to effect, to effect positive change. On the ladder of progress and success, your interests must extend to lifting others who are in the margins of life to the next level. And you do so with empathy, compassion, and sincerity. We could not give you all the assets to prepare you for the world that is still revolving, Industry 4.0. But over two, the last two to four years that you have spent with us, you have been elect intellectually stimulated, which has resulted in your heightened curiosity and creativity and a desire for lifelong learning. As you transition from achievement to application, Set yourselves higher standards. Refuse to accept the standard of okayness and push yourselves beyond the zones of comfort that are intent on holding you prisoner. Stand for the values that, you, that will define who you are. Because along this journey and in the end, all we have and all that would really matter is who we are. The message I address to students who have gone before you would in a few minutes be the same message that applies to you. While your association with ICCI is still fresh, give yourself and your resources 
to work that is yet to be discovered or currently undone. Collaborate with us for partnership increases productivity. Be our advocates. I wish for you every success, every blessing, wherever the next step of your journey takes you. And I thank you. On behalf of the board, I thank you for entrusting your education to ICCI. When we consider the society's needs, the pace of change in every hamlet and city, we realize how pivotal is the work of ICCI and its stakeholders. We celebrate 50 years of ICCI service in the Cayman Islands and praise the 24 graduates receiving their degrees this evening. In a while, we rise from this place with a renewed sense of purpose that we must participate fully in the change we hope for. We know that most beautiful things, the most valuable things, are born out of pain and struggle and a resolve to persevere through the process. ICCI and graduates, keep focus on the purpose. Keep faith with the process. Press on, ICCI. Press on, graduates. Excellence awaits. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Does my voice do it? <laughs> that was pretty spectacular. Thank you, Orman, for your inspiring speech. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Representing the generations to come, I would like to invite George Brooks, the son of Shelley Brooks, one of our graduates, to join me on the stage to make this presentation. On behalf of the International College of the Cayman Islands, we would like to have Orman come back up, please. <laughs> okay. Please accept this as a token of our appreciation for delivering the address for the 47th annual commencement. Thank you. Thank you, George. I now invite our Dean and Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Eliza Beverly, and our very own Registrar, Ms. Melissa Bent Hamilton to come and preside over this ceremony. Thank you, Dr. Kuhn, and good evening to all. We ask Ms. Burnett Botten to make her way to the stage to present this first award. Is she here? Okay. Yes. This first award is quite meaningful. Without her hard work and determination, along with the work of others, we would not be here today celebrating 50 years of excellence in higher education. We want to take this opportunity to recognize one of our founders, who is still engaged in this good work that we do at ICCI. Dr. Elsa Cummings, we love and appreciate you. Presenting this award, <laughs> presenting this award is Ms. Vernette Bodden. Vernette has worked beside Dr. J. Hugh and Dr. Elsa Cummings from inception and is often seen on campus today still helping out.
Thank you, and good evening, everyone. Before I make this presentation, I would like to make, uh, should I, how should I say? Um, the chairman of the board of trustees, he forgot a very important person, Mr. Carlyle McLaughlin, right here in the front. Carlyle, we welcome you, and Mrs. McLaughlin. And thank you for everything that you have done for ICCI and continue to do for ICCI. Thank you. Sorry. Oops, I'm a little slow, but I'm getting there. Dr. Cummins, Dr. Elsa M. Cummins, President Emerita, in appreciation of 50 years plus of dedication, commitment, advocacy, leadership, and invaluable service to higher education in the Cayman Islands, especially in the community of Solana Newlands, Bordentown on the whole, and the three islands. We present you this plaque for, uh, for the hard work. can I say? What can I say? Thank you. This is an example of why ICCI is here today. I have to say something which I'm sure Burnett remembers. She took a speech class from Dr. Hugh Cummings and Burnett would not give her speech. So, of course, she failed the course. <laughs> she did it again a second time. She would not speak. <laughs> How many times did this happen? Three, four times maybe. Finally, she gave the speech. Dr. Hugh Cummings commented, Vernette would not speak, but after she started, she never stopped. <laughs> we are all very grateful for what she has done throughout all the years that she served until 2009 when she was stricken by what you see here today. And yet, she's a fighter. Here she is. And I just wish that many of you will follow her examples and be fighters for whatever it is that moves your heart. I thank you for this. I've been here longer than 50 years. I don't know if I'll be here for the next 10, but I remember when we went through the 40th that I said, maybe I'll make it to the 50th. I am very thankful that I am here I do not know how much longer I will be here, but I know that you have all been in my heart. I have loved every ICCI student, whether they stayed with us or not. I cannot remember all their names, but certainly they made a difference in my life, and it's all been worth it. Thank you very much. Would Ms. Beth McField and Mr. Carlisle McLaughlin please make your way to center of the stage. 50 plus years ago, Ms. Flores McCoy McField, a Kamanian teacher, longed to see an institution of higher education in the Cayman Islands. She shared her dream 
with Dr. J. Hugh and Elsa Cummings. And through their commitment and the generosity of so many others, the International College of the Cayman Islands was established. This year's Floris McCoy McField Memorial Award will be presented by her daughter, Miss Beth McField, and the award goes to Mr. Carlisle McLaughlin Jr. As an alum, the first ICCI graduate to achieve his CPA credentials and former trustee, Mr. Carlisle McLaughlin Jr. has generously supported ICCI both financially and in kind throughout the years. Thank you for your commitment and continued support. Dr. Elsa Cummings and Mr. Mike Manesto, please make your way to the center of the stage. The Dr. J. Hugh Cummings Memorial Award for Institutional Service is named after our college's first president and founder and is presented to an individual who has given exceptional institutional service to the college. This year's award recipient is none other than our very own former board chair, Mr. Mike Manesto. Mr. Manesto has given exceptional service to ICCI over the last nine years. His leadership on the Board of Trustees has helped ICCI to become the institution it is today. Being a partner at EY, Mike leads a busy life flying all around the world. Yet, with his hectic schedule, his commitment and service to ICCI is unwavering. Thank you, Mike, for all you do for us. Would Miss Melinda Gibson Nixon and Miss Heather Bodden please make your way to the center of the stage? The Barbara Strain Pioneer Award for Institutional Service honors an individual who has provided extraordinary service to the college. It is named after Barbara Strain, an original signer of the UCCI Charter in 1970 and a member of the first building construction team. She also played a key role in the installation of ICCI FM 101.1, the first radio station in the Cayman Islands in 1973. This year, the award is sponsored by our primary and excellent sponsor, RBC, Royal Bank, Cayman Limited, and will be presented by Ms. Melinda Gibson Nixon, country manager and branch manager. This award goes to the former ICCI Board of Trustees member, Ms. Heather Bodden. Ms. Bodden has been with the college since its inception. She has served as a trustee for over 22 years and was awarded an honorary degree, Master of Humanities by the International College. Ms. Bodden still continues to support the college today. Thank you, Ms. Bodden, for all you do for us. Would Mr. Richard Hugh, CEO and Managing Director of CUC, make your way to center stage? The next award is the James Manoa Borden Memorial Award. This award honors Cayman's first national hero who donated the land where the ICCI campus is located. This award acknowledges an ICCI student who exemplifies volunteerism in the community. 
This award is sponsored by Caribbean Utilities Company. This year's award goes to Miss Tashe Lawson. Tashe is always willing and ready to assist with countless projects on campus. Long before she was elected student council president, she worked tirelessly to be the voice for the students. We expect her now to do even greater things as she continues with us while pursuing her bachelor's degree. Would Mr. Ray Swartz, Director of Training and Development at the Cayman Islands Society of Human Resource Professionals, please make your way to center stage. The next award is for the student with the highest GPA in the Master of Science in Human Resources program. This award is sponsored by the Cayman Islands Society of Human Resource Professionals. This year's award goes to both master's students, Ms. Sandiso Malanga and Ms. Catherine Wells. Mr. Mike Manesto, partner at EY, make your way to center stage. The next award is for the student with the highest GPA overall in the bachelor's program. This award is sponsored by EY Cayman Limited, and this year's award goes to Miss Shelley Brooks. Mr. Woody Foster, newly appointed president of the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce, please make your way to center stage. The next award goes to the student with the highest GPA attained in business administration at the bachelor's level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You didn't turn the page. <laughs> All right. Um, the next award is sponsored by the. Are we doing? Is he here? Mr. Foster, <laughs> you're here. Thank you. All right. This award is sponsored by the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce. The recipient for this award, for the student with the highest GPA in business at the associates level, is Ms. Tashe Lawson. Mr. Foster, please stay on stage for us.
the award for the student with the highest GPA in the bachelor's program for business administration goes to Miss Shelley Brooks. Mr. Francois LaMontagna, Vice President of SIPA, make your way to center stage. The next award goes to the student with the highest GPA in accounting at the bachelor's level. This award is sponsored by the Cayman Islands Institute of Professional Accountants. This award recipient is Mr. Steve Miller. And we ask Mr. Lamatach to remain on stage. The next award is for the student with the highest GPA in accounting at the associate's degree level. Again, this award is sponsored by SEPA. The two students receiving this award are Ms. Cheryl Edwards and Mr. Jacob Wood. <laughs> Louise Reed, Owner and Development and Client Relationship Manager, please make your way to the center of the stage. The next award is for the student with the highest GPA overall in the Associates program. This student scored a perfect 4.0. This award is sponsored by NOVA, and this year's award recipient is Ms. JoLynn Scott. Mr. Luke Murray, People Team and Audit Partner at KPMG, please make your way to center stage. Okay, Luke is not here today. All right, no worries. Dr. Beverly will fill in for him. The next award is for the student with the highest GPA in Information System Management at the associate degree level. This award is sponsored by KPMG. The student receiving this award is Mr. Doran Kelly. <laughs> Dr. Kuhn, will you please come and present the next award? Thank you, Dr. Beverly, and thank you, Ms. Hamilton. This thing keeps growing. I don't know who's watering it. <laughs> Lord of mercy. 
Well, I wanted to start this year um, with a new award because we basically have shaken up um, the camp, if you will. And this award goes for the most outstanding capstone. The capstone is the last course a student takes in their program. It is a multifaceted project that serves as a culminating academic and intellectual experience for students. The title of this year's most outstanding capstone project is External Influences, How the Cost of Living in the Cayman Islands Affects Employees' Salaries and How Lowering the Cost of Living Benefits Employees and Organizations. Would you please help me welcome the author of the most outstanding capstone, Ms. Catherine Wells. Would Professor Don Norrie and Board Chair Wayne McManus please make your way to the center stage. Our final award for the evening is the Board of Trustees Teacher Excellence Award. The graduates voted and from their top nominations, the instructor was chosen. This year's Board of Trustees Teacher Excellence Award Recipient is Professor Adolphus Laidlow. <laughs> Professor, yes. Professor Laidlow, commitment to teaching and learning and his ability to explain difficult concepts is highly visible in the classroom. We appreciate his contributions to excellence at ICCI. Professor Laidlow could not be with us this evening due to a prior engagement. But accepting the award on his behalf is Professor Don Norrie. Professor Norrie is the owner of Norrie and Media Group, and he is our new online marketing instructor. Professor Norrie has donated both financially and in kind with books from his publishing company. He has flown all the way from Pennsylvania to be with us tonight. Thank you, Professor Norrie for your beyond the call of duty and commitment to our students. Congratulations to all of the award winners on behalf of the entire corporate community. We invite our primary and excellent sponsor for the past four years, RBC Royal Bank Cayman Limited, to bring greetings to the class of 2019. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Melinda Gibson Nixon, country manager and branch manager for RBC Royal Bank Cayman Limited to the podium. protocol having been established. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of RBC and the wider corporate community, I would like to congratulate the entire graduation class on your exceptional achievements. <clears throat> Let's give them a big round of applause. According to the American civil rights leader, Martin Luther King, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively, to think critically, intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. <clears throat> I am confident that your experiences during the course of your studies have developed your mind in unique ways while building character and deepening your knowledge of the world around you. Know that this can never be taken from you. RBC's philanthropic trust centers on three key pillars education, youth, and community. It is in this spirit that we are proud to sponsor this commencement ceremony for the fourth consecutive year. For many of RBC's 56 years in the community, we have been leading supporters of higher education, youth empowerment, and economic development to help make these islands a better place for all of us. 
This includes our support of many students who have walked through the halls of UCCI. We look forward to building on this legacy and continuing our service and support for decades to come. Ladies and gentlemen, higher education has the capacity to both empower and enlighten. This helps students achieve their full potential while building the skills needed to thrive in a solutions-oriented and rapidly changing world. It also sets the stage for future career success and it can improve the lives of individuals and their families. To the students in the room today, let me say this. Your commitment to education will also have a material and lasting impact on the Caymanian community. Education, training, and development contribute to a thriving and prosperous economy, which makes our region and our country a better place to live, work, and raise our families. Finally, to the leaders, faculty, and staff at ICCI, thank you. Your commitment to excellence and higher education in the Cayman Islands has fostered the environment that allows these young men and women to succeed. Thank you. You are shaping the future of our community, and for that, we will continue to salute you. And to the graduates, on behalf of RBC Royal Bank, please accept once again my heartfelt and sincerest congratulations. I wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors. I am confident that you will have a positive impact, not only here, but around the world. Congratulations. Thank you, Miss Melinda Gibson Nixon. As you can see, it takes a lot of support from the community to educate and produce a talented class like the class of 2019. Let's give RBC Royal Bank and all of our corporate sponsors a big round of applause. <laughs> now is the time you have worked so hard for and your families have waited for over the years, the conferral of degrees. Dr. Eliza Beverly, Dean and Chief Academic Officer, will now come to present the candidates receiving their degrees. Will the candidates for the Master of Science degree please stand and remain standing? Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please stand? And the candidates for the Associate of Science degree, please stand. President Kuhn, on behalf of my esteemed colleagues on the faculty of the International College of the Cayman Islands, I have the pleasure of presenting these candidates who have completed all the requirements for their respective degrees. Candidates by the authority vested in me as the president by the Board of the Trustees of the International College of the Cayman Islands, and having been recommended by the faculty, I confer upon you the Master's of Science degree, the Bachelor's of Science degree, and Associate of Science degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto, and urge you to use your education to serve the great nation of the Cayman Islands and humankind around the world. Congratulations, you may be seated. At this time, the graduands, the individual graduands will be introduced. Our business and facilities manager, Lisa Woods, will lead the graduates by their rows and faculty members Dr. Cindy George and Ms. Jewel Meikle will assist with distributing the diplomas. Will the master's degree recipients please come forward? The reading of the names will be conducted by Ms. Melissa Ben Hamilton, the college registrar. You will be hooded by Dr. Elsa Cummings and His Excellency Governor Martin Roper will present you with your diplomas.
Sindiso Mathanga, Master of Science in Management, Human Resources Concentration. Amanda Raquel Wells, Master of Science in Management, Human Resources Concentration. Congratulations, and thank you, Governor Roper, for awarding the diplomas. Will the bachelor's degree recipients please come forward? Miss Lanith Monteith will present you with your diplomas. Melissa will approach the podium. Shelley Brooks. Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. <laughs> Tiana Walton, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. <laughs> Jermaine Ebanks. Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Accounting Concentration. Steve Hutton Miller, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Accounting Concentration. Kimberly Watler, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Accounting Concentration. <laughs> Pauline Meloris Brown, Bachelor of Science in Office Administration. <laughs> Manisa Webb, Bachelor of Science in Liberal Studies. Congratulations and thanks to Ms. Lanith Monteith for awarding the diplomas. Will the associate's degree recipients please come forward? Your diplomas will be presented by Trustee Orman Williams. Melissa Bent, please approach the podium. Natalisha Corrine Bennett, Associate of Science in Business. <laughs> Stacy Bernard, Associate of Science in Business. <laughs> Drianne Anadra Ebanks, Associate of Science in Business. <laughs> Tashe Lawson, Associate of Science in Business. <laughs> Vanessa Scott Banks, Associate of Science in Business. <laughs> Cheryl Dawn Edwards, Associate of Science in Business, Accounting Concentration. Jodisa Hamilton, Associate of Science in Business, Accounting Concentration. <laughs> Jacob Josiah Wood, Associate of Science in Business, 
accounting concentration. So Shana Simone Brown, Associate of Science in Business, Finance Concentration. <laughs> Daniel Spence, Associate of Science in Business, Finance Concentration. <laughs> Duran Kelly, Associate of Science in Business, Information Systems Management Concentration. Sydney Verdon Terry, Associate of Science in Business, Information Systems Management Concentration. <laughs> Jolyn Scott, Associate of Science in General Studies. Congratulations and thanks, Trustee Orman Williams, for awarding the diplomas. Will the entire class of 2019 remain standing, please? It took a lot of hard work for you to get here, and it took a lot of support and encouragement along the way. You did not do this by yourself. Would you please turn to those loved ones in the room and help to achieve this milestone, give them a warm hand of appreciation. Central to this achievement are members of the faculty and staff who compelled you to excellent at every turn. Faculty and staff, would you please stand? Class, will you please turn to the faculty and staff in the room who helped you achieve this milestone and give them a warm hand of appreciation. <laughs> Faculty, staff, and graduates, you may be seated. I will now ask our distinguished platform guest if you will take your seats in the front row so we can all watch the video and share the memories of the graduating class. Thank you. 
It is now time for the transition from student to graduate, the celebration of the tassel turn. The graduating class of 2019, please stand and join me on the stage. signify this occasion by moving your tassel from the right side to the left side of your mortarboard. <laughs> Graduates, as you exit, we invite our platform guests on the front row to please stand and join me in front to congratulate you and your milestone. Okay, congratulations, you may be seated. Okay, graduates, this is where it all takes place as far as being on behalf of the International College of the Cayman Islands Alumni Association. We welcome you to the association and remind you to keep in mind the high purpose to which you have aspired and for which this great college has prepared leadership, ethical behavior, service to our beloved Cayman and to the world beyond. I look forward to seeing you during the many activities that we will share when we return to campus. Please remember to support ICCI with help you along your journey to success. 
Thank you. Graduate Jermaine E. Banks will now come to present the class gift. Yeah. 